Okay, I don't know why my face looks so warm, but it's been a while since I filmed and I'm finally, I'm finally able to have the energy to do it. It's been a weird, unproductive week for me. Um, I don't know if it's the weather or barometric pressure or because I'm a lazy piece of shit, but I haven't been able to do anything at all. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead with this. We're gonna charge, gonna forward, straight steam, charge straight ahead. I'm from the UK, which means that I have an invested interest in the show called Eurovision Song Contest. For those of you who are not from Europe, who are watching this, you might be a bit confused about why everyone goes so crazy over a show called Eurovision every single year. Essentially. A song from most countries in Europe, there are semi-finals and then a great big grand final. Um, all these songs are pitted against one another and there's a lot of debate over um, this like <laughs> political landscape of uh, countries voting for their neighbouring countries and whether the UK is just universally hated. Um, and this year, um, the UK was awarded zero points from both the uh, independent musical juries from each country and also from the public vote from each country. It's the first time it's ever happened. Um, the last time we got zero points, or nil point, as they put it, um, was 2003, and that was before you had the jury vote and the public vote. It used to just be the public vote, as far as I'm aware. In the UK specifically, this show causes a lot of controversy because there's a big amount of people in the UK who believe that we should stop putting so much money into it because we're one of the uh, five sort of founding default countries that get through to the final every year. And because of that, we put in a lot of money. And we always do very poorly. Um, I think the last time we won was Katrina and the Wave back in 1997, might be wrong, but we haven't won it in in that long, <laughs> like 24 years. And we put in like a few hundred thousand pounds every year, I believe. And because we always do so badly, um, a lot of people in our country take it as a massive snub. Europe hates us, um, Brexit, and um, basically, there is a big debate about that. I don't necessarily agree with it, but one of the problems that we have is that our songs just aren't really that good. The entries that we put forward are usually not great. So I'm setting out today, <laughs> I know this video is all over the place, but I'm setting out today to answer the question, how can the UK do better at Eurovision? And if you're not subscribed to my channel, um, and you've got some strong feelings about Eurovision, feel free to put them down below. However, comments such as, oh, well, I guess all we have to do is, you know, move into the middle of Europe and get a neighboring country so they can vote for us. That's not helpful and that doesn't answer the question. Saying things like, we should just pull out because Europe hates us and they make it known. That also doesn't answer the question. I can't, I can't use that as the definitive answer to how we can score better at Eurovision. I can only look at what we've got the fact that we are an island, we have pissed off a lot of people. There are certainly things that we, as as the UK, like submitting a song, there are things that we can do better. There are things that are within our control and we don't need to get angry. <laughs> Firstly, looking at the obvious, okay? The, the very obvious, it's a Eurovision Song Contest. We will stand a better chance at winning a song contest or <laughs> at least scoring above dead last if we submit a good song. For the last few years that I've been watching it at least, the songs have been just really generic, unmotivated pop music. I personally didn't like the song this year. Um, I can respect the person who wrote it and performed it, not really my thing, and it was a tough year this year. There was a there was a, there were a lot of striking songs there. It was a really tough competition this year, and our entry just fell completely flat. We send the same kind of thing, in my opinion, every year, and it sounds half-assed. Like it, it sounds like we don't want to be there. We it's, we don't put the effort in. Other countries, um, the, the production value of the songs, the way they're written, and also the production value of the performance, which I'll talk about in a bit as well, um, they're just, they're, they're, they're off the fucking chain, some of them. This year, Russia had like a woman in a dress that was moving via remote control, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is the best thing ever. The songs this year, like Italy won with over 500 points because the song was amazing. I loved Finland's entry, that was my favorite. People loved Iceland because it was quirky and unique, but we have to say Send better songs and you know what it the easiest way to do it is to do something fucking different for a change all we're doing is sending the same genre 
it's it's our interpretation of what we think a Eurovision song sounds like. And whilst every other country has moved on and tried different things like heavy metal or uh, this year um, a band from Italy won it and it's really fucking cool rock music, we're just still sending the same stuff. We're, what we need to do, we need to stop sending pop songs and we need to send a rock song for the first time in God knows how long, maybe ever. We need to send... Uh, this, this is not an advertisement for me. I know it sounds like I'm trying to do this myself. I don't, I don't think I want to do it. But we need a female-fronted rock act, whether it's a band or whether it's just like a badass female in like a badass suit with a big guitar and with like really big catchy riff, you know? Like it can still be like pop-oriented the way that it's written, like the structure, like verse, chorus, verse, chorus. But you gotta make it have a bit of edge, you know? We gotta make people stand up and pay attention and be like, holy shit, the UK actually brought it this year? The fuck? You know, like leather jacket, leather pants, I don't know. I just, I just something, something striking, something that, you know, people watching at home in, in, in countries in Europe won't be expecting. So it would get their attention. Something with a bit of edge, a bit of grit. Something where people won't go, oh, it's the UK again. Secondly, production value. This year, we had James Newman on a weird platform with two fucking polystyrene trumpets next to him and barely any movement whatsoever. The stage was pretty much bare apart from that. Other countries had so many things going on. But then again, I mean, things like um, Italy, who won it, didn't have a lot going on, but they were high energy band. They were running around the stage. You know, we had James Newman, bless her, like just standing there. And that's obviously the way that he was choreographed. Um, and it just, it was very underwhelming. And people pick up on movement, fluidity. You know, you can actually, bring a lot more energy to a song through just visual movement. So I'm not saying we need electric rain. I might be saying we need electric rain. We need dancers, we need pyro, okay? We need a hot girl. <laughs> we just, we just gotta show that we actually wanna be there. And this is the problem at the minute. If, if we can't convince ourselves that we wanna be part of this, how are we gonna convince any other country to bother voting for us if we just look like we're just turning up, you know, <laughs> like we've done the homework the night before or the same morning's due in but did it on the bus, you know? It's not good, it's not good. And thirdly, something that we can do, because like I said, oh, well, we can't, well, well we haven't got any neighbors and Europe hates us. Yeah, with that fucking attitude, you know what? You're giving them a reason to. If you just constantly act like a sore loser, say we should quit, we don't want to be a part of it anyway, half of the UK watched it. It had a phenomenal viewership in the UK this year. People want the UK to be in it, okay? Nobody's forcing you to watch it if you don't want to watch it, but the attitudes that come up online, like, oh, fucking Eurovision, oh, why do we want to be a part of this? Why don't we want to keep paying money into it? People see that and they pick up on that, okay? If you want to add to the stereotype that we are just a really fucking racist nation, you're going the right way about it sometimes from what I've seen. Even the presenter that we put on to give our votes, uh, Amanda Holden, she's well known in the UK. She's not, she's not the most popular person in the UK, but she comes out I think she she says um, she says good night or good evening in French and Dutch, and then immediately turns around and goes, oh well, uh, I know there are two languages. I don't know which is which though. Well fucking done. Well done on taking pride in being a fucking what, like a monoglot or whatever the fucking term is. Well done on making sure that we're the only country that looks proud to know one fucking language. Meanwhile, you had the presenter from Greece being a ten-year-old kid who could speak perfect fucking English. Okay, these attitudes that this is all a big fucking joke uh, and we don't need to do anything because we're the UK. It's these attitudes that make us look like shits. And <laughs> we do, we do look like shits. But these are things that we can control. These are things that we can change. No, we can't stop Greece and Cyprus giving each other 12 points, okay? But we can start turning up with a bit more fucking effort through the song through the imagery, through the performance, and through the attitudes that we show online. Now, do you think for a fucking second, if we came in the top five, there would be any of these comments like, oh, we shouldn't be in it anyway, oh, this piece of shit. No, we'd probably be out in the streets being fucking pissed and rioting for no fucking reason. We'd be celebrating, you know, oh, the UK, uh, you know, because that's how, that's how quick we turn on a dime in this country. And that's one of the problems. That is one of the reasons that other countries 
uh, looking at our performance, look at us and go, why should we vote for the UK? They don't want to be here. You know, they act like they hate it. They say they hate it. And the song certainly sounds like they hate it. You know, we need to stop treating it like such a big fucking joke. Yes, it's a great evening of entertainment. It's fun, but you look at what other countries put into this show every year. And then you look at our dismal attempts. It's, it's not good. It's not good at all. So if you want things to change, that, those are my thoughts, okay? Talking about things that are within our control. Because yes, we've left the EU. We can't do anything about that because people are blaming this on, on Brexit, even though we've done terribly for the last, what, 10 years. We can't change that. No, we can't put ourselves in mainland Europe, okay? Because it's all, everyone just looks to the neighbors, oh, it's all political. We can't change that stuff, okay? We need to focus on what we can change and that's, the amount of effort we put in and our attitudes towards the show. So those are my thoughts. Please don't ask me if I would be willing to do Eurovision. I get asked all of the time. I don't know. I, I personally really love watching Eurovision every year. I love, I just love the drama of all the voting. I love seeing what the other countries do. And it's something that we've been in since, what is it, when did, when did it start? Was it like late 50s or early 60s? You know, it's, a, it's an institution and we should be proud of it not ashamed of it. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, if your country was in Eurovision, how did your country do? I want to know what, what were your thoughts on your country's act? Uh, who was your favourite? Who did you want to win? And why is the bassist from the Italian band so hot? Leave all your answers down below and until next time guys, thank you so much for watching and I shall catch you later.